The best in the West in association with Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union is your trusted local financial partner. Access your money 24-7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. We support local communities. We support you. Close your eyes and pull like down. <laughs> Welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined on today's show by Star Sport editor Kieran McCarthy and freelance sports journalist Joe McCarthy. On today's podcast we're officially launching our Best in the West competition as we go in search of West Cork's favourite ever sports person. Best in the West is brought to you in association with Access Credit Union. Access your money 24-7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. Now over the past few weeks we've worked tirelessly to whittle down our shortlist to 16 contenders and I'm hoping our listeners will be in agreement that it's a very strong field. In a few moments we'll be conducting a live draw for the round of 16 but before we do Kieran, I think it's important that you shed some light on the selection process and then maybe give us a rundown of the final 16 contenders. Uh, thanks, Jack. Yeah, best in the West, it's the search for West Cork's greatest ever sports person. And what we're doing, we're taking into the last 50 years. So that's from 1970 up to 2020. So what we've done with the, with this, we've consulted some of the, I suppose, the greatest sporting minds in West Cork to get their opinions on who should be in the list and who should not be in the list. And there's been plenty of deliberation and debate over the last couple of weeks. And to be quite honest, it was a very, very tough decision to leave out certain people and to put it down to just 16 West Cork sports people. But Jack, that just shows the calibre of sports people that we have here in West Cork. It's worth reminding our listeners, this is a golden era for West Cork sport. Um, I've said it countless times before, but I don't think there's any place in the country that can match West Cork in terms of the diversity of the sports people, their talent and the success that they've had. And you'll see that when we list off the 16 who've made the list. These are local West Cork sports people who've achieved on national, international and world stages. Like they're they're the best of the best in their in their chosen sport. So um, it's been an in- interesting process. Like I said, plenty of debate and we're down to the last 16. And yeah, I think it's time to just to kick on and let's get this show on the road, Jack. Okay, Kieran. Talk is true. Your last, your your the final sixteen contenders for the best in the West. I just list them off now, but just to correct you, Jack, you said your last sixteen. It's not Kieran McCarthy's last sixteen. It's the selection committee who have chosen these last sixteen. So this is a this was made by, like I said, some of the greatest sporting minds in West Cork have contributed to this. this all all sixteen. And- all angry hate mail can be addressed to the sports editor, Island Street. Skibbereen County Cork or you'll find me on Twitter too but what I'll do I'm going to list them off in alphabetical order kind of through their surnames so I list off the 16 West Cork sports people in the running for the best in the West title we've Declan Barron Gaelic football Niall Cahillan Gaelic football 
Graham Kenty, Gaelic football, John Caulfield, soccer, Nolik Cleary, Gaelic football, Keith Cronin, motorsport, Tim Crowley, hurling, Bill Daly, road bowling, Noel Feely, horse racing, Laura Guest, rugby, David Hart, hockey, Phil Healy, athletics, Conor Horahan, soccer, Paul O'Donovan, rowing, Jennifer O'Leary, Camogie, and Kevin Jor O'Sullivan, Gaelic football. That's the 16, Jack, in the running for best in the West. Okay, Jor, well, you've been holding your tongue there for the last few minutes, so we're going to come to you now, and I have two questions. First of all, what do you think of the overall list? You obviously cover a wide variety of sports, so you would have had interactions with many of these, and you'd have a good knowledge of most of them. So firstly, what do you think of the list? And secondly, any glaring omissions you'd like to point out to the selection committee? Um, well, well, first of all, it's like anything, it's subjective. So it is, it's based in fairness to Kieran. Uh, it didn't just come off the top of his head. The, a lot of people have been asked about this list and uh, their opinions saw it and um, expert opinions in the various different sports. Um, it's hard to argue with any of those 16 names. Some of them are not from our generations, but anytime you go to a match or anytime you talk to anybody about sport, all those names that you've just listed invariably come up. So they, they deserve to be there. It's uh, incredibly difficult to pick 16, which I think re-emphasizes Kieran's point about West Cork. And uh, something I don't think, to be fair, until Kieran came along, we were uh, very vocal about down here. We were, we didn't really understand it or we didn't really acknowledge it. Um, and I think the Southern Star deserve credit for that with the sports awards that they started many years ago to acknowledge all the different sports stars in the different fields. Um, one thing I have noticed, it's good to see the likes of Nolly Cleary, the likes of Laura Guest there. I'd like to see a lot more and Phil Healy, a lot more women in the list, I'm sure, as Kieran would as well. But it's changing as every year goes on. We're getting more and more female athletes who are not being pandered to, but are being recognised for the, the brilliance in their particular fields. And your second question, Jack, about who's been left out? Well, uh, in terms of glaring omissions, uh, I mean, you know, the first name that springs to mind is Gary, Gary O'Donovan. Um, personally, I understand where Kieran is coming from. I'd have the two of them in there together for their, their collective achievements um, if I was if I was arguing or banging the table and also there's quite a few people I would imagine in Castlehaven who'd be delighted to see both Nolly Theory and uh, Noel Callan getting the, their deserved credit and their deserved due but look who you're leaving out Shea Fahey Larry Tompkins I mean well, okay, it, let, like, let's explore really... that let's explore that for a minute then Joe, because I, I actually made a case for Larry Tompkins, but as I'm not originally from West Cork or a footballing place in general, I was dismissed when it came to the Gaelic football selection process. So I know <laughs> the, the Kieran's problem, or not Kieran's problem, the selection committee's problem with Larry Tompkins. <laughs> I should choose my words more wisely here. But the selection committee's problem with Larry Tompkins was the fact that he was a Kildare man first and foremost. Obviously, he went on to win all Ireland's with with Cork and have a stellar club career with Castlehaven but can you see any merit in leaving him off based on that or should he in your opinion is it a no-brainer that he would be on the list I I understand the logic behind it the decision um, but Larry probably played his some of his best football in the Castlehaven jersey in the championship matches that he saw him play but would Larry have won as much? Which would Larry have won as much, if anything, with Castlehaven if Cahillan wasn't there? So you can you can you can flip that coin very quickly. Uh, Noel Cahillan's presence and Noel Cahillan's ability and just his sheer doggedness and bloody mindedness when it came to winning drove that Castlehaven team to victories on days that Larry didn't do it for them. So it's. I think from outside of Cork, it's easy to just point to Tompkins and say, yeah, he should be for what he achieved in a Cork jersey and in a Castlehaven jersey. But I understand the logic of picking Cahillan, even though because he's, he's, a, he's a native. But also, I think it's worth remembering there were days that he had to do an awful lot of dirty work. Um, and I don't mean that to be derogatory. He had to do an awful lot of dirty work off the ball and on the ball to help Castlehaven win titles that they may not have won. Well, we might come back to Cahillan in a minute when we're going through the final 16. But I want to just stick with the people who missed out on the list just for a moment we won't dwell on this for too long but you obviously mentioned Gary O'Donovan and he's another one who I could see a very strong fa case for being included uh, I think would I be right in saying him and Paul are the only two West Cork athletes to ever win an Olympic medal which in, a, in and of itself seems worthy of inclusion on any list but Kieran, I know you 
thought long and hard and there was lots of debate about this one whether to include the both of them together or choose one or the other as not to have two wrong um, representatives on the list so can you maybe go into some of the thought process behind Paul over Gary rather than both of them and not putting them against each other but if you know what I mean this was probably the toughest decision that we've had to make in all, in all the selection process uh, Jack like you said West Cork athletes have only ever won two Olympic medals and they were both won by Gary and Paul back in, in 2016. But when they were putting this list together, like um, Jordan mentioned there, like uh, Larry Tompkins didn't make it, Lily Delacour is another one who didn't make it, and she's a world and European champion in kickboxing, Greta Cormick is another, Tony Davis from Skibbereen. So we've a lot of really, really talented sports people who didn't make the list. and. We had it down to maybe 17, 16, 17, and Gary was kind of, he was in, he was out, he was he was there on the edge. And um, I think what, what it comes down to is, it wasn't Paul up against Gary, but when you're looking at the two of them, Paul is a four-time world champion. Paul is the greatest Irish war that we've ever, ever produced. And um, probably the, one of the greatest athletes that Ireland has ever produced. So when you weigh him up against, I suppose, Gary, for like Gary's a world champion and an Olympic silver, silver medalist, but as, as, as an individual, we just went for for Paul instead to kind of fly the rowing flag. Again, it was it was a very hard decision to make. You could make a good case to include the two of them, but then who do you leave out? You know, kind of you're going back into the list again, and you're looking at the people in that list, and it's very very hard to leave someone out of that. So um, it was there were some very tough decisions on that kind of, and probably leaving Gary O'Donovan out was probably the toughest decision of the lot. But I'm very, very happy with the final 16 that we have, as a selection committee, have ended up with. Um, I think it's the it's the best of the best. And like George said, it's always subjective. You're always going to have people saying that um, that Tony Davis of O'Donovan Rossa should be on that list. Uh, Lily De La Cour should be on that list. And they're probably right in a way because those sports people are supremely talented. But these are the final 16 that we've settled with and that we feel right now are the best in the West and that should go forward into this competition. Okay, well, let's then put to bed the debate about who should have been on, who didn't make the final list. And I'm sure that's the last we'll hear about those who are omitted. We're going to end that conversation ah. there <laughs> and we're going to focus on the 16 who were included. So, Kieran, I suppose without further ado, let's get this draw underway. And um, just for those listening, Kieran is doing a very responsible job drawing names out of a pavers or pavers shoe shop bag and uh, I suppose the idea behind this is we're going to pit each of the athletes against each other in a last 16 tie there'll be votes held on Twitter where the great West Cork public can vote for their favourite so it's as transparent as can be so Kieran, let's draw the first tie so this is like Jack said the last 16 so the first person out is Declan Barron. Declan Barron will be taking on Bill Daly. Ooh. Next one out is we have Tim Crowley, Newtonstown and Cork hurling legend. Who will be up against? Ooh, Graham Kenty. So that's Newtonstown against Bentry. That's going to be a fun one. Next up. Keith Cronin from Betty Lickie, motorsport man, is up against Conor Horrohan, our Aston Villa and Ireland international midfielder. I'm going to give this a good shake, give the, the draw bag a good, sh- good shake. <laughs> Next up, we have Jennifer o- O'Leary, a four time All Ireland Camogie senior winner. And we have Joe McCarthy here as our player. independent adjudicator on the draw as well, don't forget. Jennifer Leary against Nolly Cleary. Oh, Lord. Oh. That is a big one. Nolly Cleary of Castlehaven. Two of the greatest West Cork sportswomen pitted against each other. Paul O'Donovan is next up. And Paul O'Donovan, four time world champion rower, will be up against John Caulfield. So the worlds of rowing and soccer will collide. Next up. Niall Cahillan from Castlehaven, who we were just talking about there. Niall Cahillan is up against Laura Guest, the rugby player from Clannacilty, who represented Ireland at three Rugby World Cups. Kevin Jor O'Sullivan 
from Edrigold, the Bearer representative on the Cork team of the century, Cork football team of the century. Kevin Jor will be taking on David Hart, a two-time World Hockey Goalkeeper of the Year, and the men who kept in Ireland in the Irish hockey team in the 2016 Olympics. Noel Feely, West Cork's greatest ever jockey, will be taking on Phil Healy in the last oh, no. 16. So there's some absolutely cracking ties there, Jack. I know you were keeping track of them as we were you yeah, were making I, a draw. I, I, I'll just quickly run down through the draw again and then I might come to Jur on his thoughts. So in tie one, we have Declan Barron up against Bill Daly. Tie two, it's Tim Crowley versus Graham Canty. Tie three, we have Keith Cronin versus Connor Howlahan. Tie four, it's Jennifer O'Leary versus Nolly Cleary. That's a big one. Tie five, Paula Donovan versus John Caulfield. Tie six, Niall Cahillan versus Laura Guest. Tie seven, Kevin Jur versus David Hart. And tie eight, Noel Feely versus Phil Healy. Like that one even rhymes. So, um, Jor, we're going to come to you first. I, the standout for me there is probably Jennifer O'Leary versus Nolly Cleary. You m- mentioned the lack of female representation at the beginning and that's going to see one of the probably favourites knocked out early doors that's the look of the draw I guess but uh, standouts for you Jer yeah I think um, if, if you're going on the previous Southern Star uh, the uh, the best ground in, the best year ground in, in West Cork and how what a success that was um, using social media I think you're going to get a big uptake on this um, the, the the pairing that you mentioned there it's unfortunate that they're paired against each other but I I believe people will get behind Nolly Cleary uh, a lot of people both inside and outside Castlehaven may well get behind her but I mean you just don't know you mentioned uh, uh, like John Caulfield as well uh, and a few others like a lot of the soccer fraternity might get behind those people and you could end up having Declan Barron going up against Graham Canty which would be uh, some match up if it does come about later on in the competition it's subjective it's it's um it's engaging with our readership and I think that's the, the most important thing about this is giving people a chance to influence a decision and write about it at a time when there's not an awful lot of live sport about so it's it's done in the best possible um and in the nicest possible way to promote sport and, and to remember a lot of great sporting people I just wanted to mention there as well because it came to me as you were speaking about some of the people that even just some of the names that haven't been haven't made the top 16 and the ones that we haven't thought about, Dave McCarthy in 1973 with Conor Kilty and All-Ireland winner, Mick McCarthy, the great Mick McCarthy from O'Donovan Rossa as well, sadly passed away. There's a multitude of people that the committee and the people that are behind all this didn't even get around to thinking about. There's been that many success stories coming out of this area. It's not an intentional um, snob or anything like that. It's just that, as Kieran said, when you look at such a small rural area of the country, to see the amount of talent, Lily that occur not even making the top 16 just tells you straight away just the amount of talent over such a long period of time I think this is going to be very interesting but my money not that we are saying we're putting money or that we endorse gambling we might we might would be on Paul (laughs) (laughs) no we're not would be on Paul O'Donovan I think uh, I think uh, I have a feeling the GA might get behind some of their their favourites there but I think Paul O'Donovan is such a as Karen correctly alluded to a, a global star at this stage um, it would be very interesting to see how this teases itself out over the coming weeks. Well, Kieran mentioned it uh, earlier, and you alluded to it there as well. Paul O'Donovan, there's a case to be made that he could well be Ireland's greatest ever sports star by the time he retires, just based on his current achievements and what he's probably going to go on to do. So, John Caulfield, who obviously had a great career as both a player and a manager with Cork City, is going to have it all to do up against Paul O'Donovan in tie five. Kieran, what, what what jumps out with you there? Some of the ties. Another one that's caught my eye is Noel Feely versus Phil Healy. Phil Healy, Ireland's fastest woman. Noel Healy, probably West Cork's, or definitely West Cork's most successful jockey of all time. Two athletes who have excelled at the top of their game on the on the highest on the highest level possible. So that's another close one, I imagine. But Phil in the popularity stakes in West Cork, is she more well known? That's a very interesting one. I think if you had a race between Phil Healy and Noel Feely on, on top of Sylvie Aquacante or Bovide or I just butchered those two horses, but if, if you had a, a race like that, kind of it could be neck and neck. Um, but that, that's a great one. Like Phil Healy, Ireland's fastest ever woman, kind of a she holds a hundred meter or two hundred meter outdoor record, the two hundred meter indoor record. But look at Noel Feely, Jack, kind of had he seven Cheltenham winners and he's kind of he's a huge following too. So that's a very interesting one. Um 
But I'm going to, just like Jor, Nolik Cleary up against Jennifer O'Leary is fascinating. I have to say, you're, you're pitting Cork Ladies Football against Cork Camogie, the two ladies sports against each other. Um, both of them are supremely gifted. If you look at Nolik Cleary, I think nine All-Irelands and three All-Stars. Look at Jennifer O'Leary. She had four All-Irelands and eight All-Stars. And J- Jennifer O'Leary could have had even more, but she took two years out at the end of the noughties to go travelling to Australia and when people talk about Jennifer O'Leary, she is one of the greatest Camogie players ever to play the game. So um, she, she, it'll be interesting to see who come, comes out of that one. That'll be absolutely fascinating. Um, just to agree with you, Paula Donovan will be one of the front runners in this, you would think, but we don't know how, how the voters are going, like who, who they'll get behind and how these polls will play out um, and how the last 16 will feed into the quarterfinals and so on. And just to tell our listeners, too, that in this Thursday Southern Star, which is on sale right now, we have the, I suppose, the time and dates for these last 16 ties, which kick off next Monday. Um, and we have an explanation, too, how these Twitter polls work, how long the polls are running for, where to vote and how to vote. So it's all explained in this week's Southern Star. But the first last 16 tie of Best in the West will kick off at 10 a.m. next Monday morning. And... Like I said earlier, Jack, let the fun begin because after this draw now, it's really whetted the appetite. Um, Jerry, you mentioned that if we were having a bet, and obviously, uh, as you said, we don't endorse or encourage gambling, especially on mythical Twitter polls. But other than Paul O'Donovan, um, a lot of this is going to be based on the popularity of the athlete as opposed to how people view their achievements head to head. So for those reasons, as Mm. you mentioned, the Castlehaven contenders might do quite well because their fans get behind their their, their own no matter what the, the setting yeah. is so but other than Paul O'Donovan who would you see doing well there in as I said the popularity stakes realistically could you see the soccer community in West Cork getting behind Conor Howerton or a John Caulfield will the rugby community I, row in behind Laura Guest I think uh, yes to all three there I think the younger generation will get behind Conor Howerton because the, the, he's more uh, he's more recognisable to them not to suggest that John Caulfield isn't but you could well see the Cork City Brigade if they get interested and they get hooked in on this uh, coming in and trying to get support him because of the success he had both on and off the pitch but keep an eye on Kevin Joe Sullivan. I'm delighted to see that name up there actually because anyone that knows anything about and even if you don't know anything about Barrow football that name and that family name is synonymous with it and has been for so long um, it's great to see his name there he was an outstanding football by all accounts outstanding football everything that's been written about him and will be written about him in this week's edition um, is very much true anyone you meet going down that direction always speaks highly of him and the, family, the O'Sullivan family name um, should Adrigal and should Bera and should that region get behind him might well have a surprise winner at the end of all of this you just don't know but um, I'm keeping an eye on the two Bantry names as well because Canty Graham Canty is just so revered in this county and outside this county and Declan Barron um, one of the all-time greats I never got to see him play but again you talk to anybody from Bantry and West Cork and his name constantly comes up but you just don't know which way it's going to go Jack and as we said we don't endorse gambling or say that you should be gambling on it but if I was a betting man and I'm not a betting man um, I think Paul O'Donovan's uh, name and possibly Phil Healy too um, because they're in the they're in the public eye so much these days but yeah, I think on the outside of it, if I was looking at an outsider, uh, I think Kevin Jaro Sullivan, just for the area he's from and how much he's respected and that family name is respected, much like the Callans and the Clearies in Union Hall and in Castle Towns and um, down in, in uh, Castlehaven as well, you could see a surprise winner in all of this. Uh, George, just to pick up uh, on something you said there quickly, you mentioned uh, Declan Barron. <coughs> he's revered as regarded as one of the greatest footballers to ever come from the region but you said you never got a chance to see him play for obvious reasons he was before your time and there isn't a huge amount of archive footage from his era available on YouTube but an interesting thing that I think this endeavour can can bring about is teaching younger generations about some of the the older stars because for me personally when I saw the final list I was familiar with most but I hadn't seen the likes of Niall Cahillan play. I'd only read about him in the Southern Star or whatever. So I actually went and watched the 1990 All-Ireland Final on YouTube just to kind of get a flavour, just so I'd be able to talk with some level of clarity about him on this. And it was an enlightening thing because he was absolutely incredibly good. His distribution, his reading of the game. And so I never would have thought to have gone back to look at that game only for he was included in this list. So I think 
for anyone who's listened who hasn't maybe seen Nola Cleary play or Jennifer O'Leary or even the younger people again who missed out on Graham Canty etc this is a chance go back watch watch why they're included most obviously a lot of them are, are more modern but some of the older ones there is good footage on YouTube check it out because sport didn't just start five years ago as some people often think Kieran M Jura gave us his dark horse there Who, who's your dark horse um, Nolly Cleary I think is, is one to watch because we talked about her in, in a football sense but she was also top class in basketball we're talking about the search for West Cork's greatest sports person and Nolly won all Ireland's with the Cork Ladies football team she won Super League and National Cups with Glenn Meyer in, in basketball I think as well she won an All Ireland Coastal Rowing title as well. So as an all rounder, Nolik had a bit of everything, and she again is supremely gifted. So she's someone like you um, mentioned earlier, Jack. If the Castlehaven community get behind her, that could go a long way in in this competition. Um, David Hart isn't someone that we mentioned um, at all, and David Hart is the Irish men's hockey goalkeeper. He's 225 international appearances to his name. But he was also voted the best hockey goalkeeper in the world for two years in a row. And that goes back to what this list shows. It highlights the best in sport in in West Cork. And we're talking about a man from Ballon Spittal who was voted the very best in the world at what he does for two consecutive years. And that just shows, again, the calibre of sports people here. And when we talk about the likes of Gary O'Donovan at Macon's and Lily Delacour and Greta Cormican, but just look at the people who are included. The David Hart, the Laura Guest, like we mentioned about her winning a historic Six Nations with Ireland back in 2013. Keith Cronin, a four time British rally champion, and he's only the second or third man ever to achieve that feat. And he's on four British rally titles along with Roger Clark. Um, so there's, it's the best of the best in our search for the best in the West. That's, um, that's actually quite good, even by my own standards. So, um, Nolly Cleary is someone who could go far. Um, Kevin Durr is, is a great show. So I'm, I'm l- looking through the list. And Kenty is someone um, that the both young and old can kind of, they can tap into. We all know about Graham Kenty, a legendary leader, kind of. He was one of those natural leaders on and off the field. Um, go back to 2010 and him coming on the All-Ireland final against Down and how he steadied his ship and got Cork over the line to win by, by, by one point that day. And, Cork needed Kenty that day to win that All-Ireland and he's the last Cork man to captain Cork to an All-Ireland senior football title so he's someone who, who could go far but I think it's very important that the different communities and the different clubs get behind their sport so if it's Graham Kenty, Bantry Blues and the GA community need to come together and push him. If it's Paul O'Donovan you'd hope that Skibreen Rowing and Rowing Ireland will come behind their men and, 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 and push them Um this what, is a what, chance what, Kieran, for just, every... on, just on um, asking the likes of Rowan Ireland to get behind what if Rowan Ireland decide to boycott the competition altogether because one of their one of their own has been <laughs> omitted these are the questions you need to start asking yourself because I think we're going to be in for a rocky ride over the next few weeks we? <laughs> well, yeah, Joe, you I'm can... just a guest on the podcast I want to be very clear on that. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Always happy to contribute. I am a guest on the podcast. Carry on. Won't edit that out. <laughs> but but it, is, it is, I think it's just like the main thing. It's a celebration of West Cork sport, like George said earlier as well. It's a chance for us to kind of to reminisce and look back at some of the unbelievable feats and unbelievable sports people that we've that we've been lucky enough to, to watch here in West Cork and that have come out of, of this region. So it is subjective. Um, who knows where we're going to finish at, at the end? Um, who knows who's going to win it? It's going to be a, a fascinating couple of weeks. It's going to help pass, pass a couple of weeks too, I think, um, keep us all entertained. Um, as to who would win, Jack, your, your guess is as good as mine, but it's definitely one of the 16 that we have mentioned earlier. <laughs> well, I did predict uh, Cora to correctly win the pitch perfect ahead of the opening round so I'm gonna again side with the two of ye and go with Paul O'Donovan as the outright favourite I can't see him being bet but I will give a shout to Noel Feely who is one of the top 10 jockeys over jumps in history in Britain and Ireland so uh, if that doesn't help him on his way I don't know what will but I think we'll, 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 we'll wrap up today's podcast and just a thank you to Access Credit Union who have come on board as sponsors in our search for the best in the West. 
Access your money 24-7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast. We'll be back on Tuesday with another episode. If you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Acast, Stitcher or wherever else you listen to the show. The best in the West in association with Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union is your trusted local financial partner. Access your money 24-7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. We support local communities. We support you.